You're listening to Somewhat Frank with me, Frank Gruber. After working in the corporate world for a decade, I decided to blaze my own path by co-founding Tech Cocktail, which helped catalyze local startup communities and eventually turned into Techco Media, a site which grew to millions of readers and was eventually acquired. Over the past decade, I've interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs and thought leaders from some of the fastest growing and most successful companies in history. And along the way, I've learned amazing lessons from my experiences. So we're going to talk about startups, tech, innovation, and their intersection with personal life, and anything else on Frank Gruber's mind. So let's get started being somewhat frank. Somewhat Frank is produced with the help of Established, my new company. Hello, everybody. It's Frank Gruber, and we're back again with a Somewhat Frank podcast. I'm joined by my longtime friend and colleague and fellow Sasquatch hunter, Johnny Goodtimes Guidos. Uh, how you doing, Johnny? Frank. I unfortunately haven't been out um, looking for Sasquatch lately because I've been quarantined, self-quarantined for the last two months, I feel like. And everything yeah. has been, it's been basically the same day over and over again. <laughs> it does feel like What's that. What's that? It does yeah. feel like that. It feels like Groundhog Day kind Work's of. Work's been busy, so that that keeps, that's a nice distraction. But other than that, I mean, it's basically the same day over and over again. And it's you try to do as much as you can to mentally, you know, take care of yourself. But it's it's rough. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely a unique time, and you almost have to look at the silver lining in that, which is you can slow down a little bit. You don't have to. I mean, you, yes, work has been crazy. Like we've got a lot of stuff going on and we've got, you know, events happening and we've got con- new contracts and we're working on a fund and we've got all this cool stuff we're doing. But, you know, at the same time, um, you know, it, it, you know, not being, not being able to do the normal things you know, you're used to doing to relieve stress or whatever has been a challenge. So let me ask you, let me ask um, you, let me yeah, ask the, you a question if you don't mind personal. Mm-hmm. Of course. Has your sure. uh, has your weight gone up or down since being quarantined? <laughs> it's gone. Well, actually, I don't have a scale, so I have oh, no really? idea. Yeah, probably so that's good. the best part. Yeah, yeah. So I used I used to weigh myself at the gym, which I don't go to anymore uh, because I'm doing self gym at home. But uh, it's probably been around the same. But I have found myself eating a lot more potato chips and things of that nature, which probably aren't good for you. But I'm like, ah, hey, you know, it's the this is this the end of the world? Hey, I don't know. Not? Let's why not have a potato chip? So. Um, or 16. So yeah, that's been, um, that's been kind of the, the way I've been rolling. But uh, I have found that I'm not doing like, you know, I'm not drinking a whole lot of alcohol. I have, I've been trying to be, I've been trying to really follow kind of a healthy lifestyle, but there are those moments of, you know, sure. Just engorging in chocolate or whatever. Such is life. <laughs> well, <laughs> Such mine is life, has yeah. gone, I'd say mine's gone up a little bit, but I, I think yeah. that everybody's concentrating on food rationing and, and eating and that sort of thing. Yeah. So Honestly, I've been eating three full meals a day, which I haven't done in years. So it's probably right. Oh, yeah, no, that's definitely true. And I guess this whole episode really is about normal. What's what's normal anymore, and what's the new normal, right? And like, you know, it brings a lot of questions. I've been thinking about it a lot, and I just put this out in the newsletter, which you can subscribe to at um, frankgruber.me forward slash newsletter. I put it out somewhat regular. It's a somewhat regular update somewhat regular frank update i guess you could say and uh it comes to people's inboxes i get a lot of feedback a lot of people are reaching out directly saying hey great great to reconnect or you know here that i got this really great book that you should check out or i I love this newsletter and i want to hear this or that so if you're following that newsletter i'd love to hear from you i'd love to get your feedback um the whole reason i started it was to better connect um because i feel like social is a little bit fragmented and siloed uh, and I feel like social media, I mean, and, and the tools that are out there. And so I was like trying to go back to old school with a newsletter um, last summer when I got up to Maine <laughs> and uh, started a newsletter. <laughs> so, well, now I'm on a podcast too. So anyway, that's where that that's coming from. But this, this last, um, this last one that I just put out was really about thinking about all the things that are happening out there because of COVID-19. You've got, um, it could be, you know, it could be till January, right? We may, we may be ho- home and in lockdown slash quarantine kind of mode till January 2021, we don't know. And there's indicators out there like, you know, university has how Boston College or Boston University has already postponed classes till January 2021. Wow. So, yeah, and I've, I've heard yeah. uh, in the in Indianapolis area that they are hoping to return in the fall, but there is a contingency mm-hmm. plan. They're preparing and more li- more than likely to come back in 2021. Right. Which means it, it's an interesting time. It means that you know, we won't have college football, you know, we won't have sports, we won't have, you know, things like that, that people are used to, which kind of take your mind off of the day to day. And, um, 
and also I guess serve some people's gambling habits, but <laughs> you know, um, not mine. I'm just saying in general. Uh, but yeah, so I guess <laughs> I don't. Bet. I used to live in Vegas. I don't have. If I lived in Vegas for eight years and had vices, I would have been dead. Like there's That's no true. way, you know. So. Um, so anyway, yeah. So going back to the point though, is, you know, we start thinking about those questions is like, what about, what about, you know, going to restaurants? And I've read articles now that are included in that, in that newsletter and that are about like the fact that, you know, maybe they will start taking your temperature, you know, er, you know, every time you go into a restaurant or public place, um, Disney is thinking about doing that in, it, or has, you know, been tossing that idea around because they want to try to see if they can catch the symptoms of the, of, of COVID-19 or any other illness, um, before people, um, jump into their parks or restaurants or live, you know, public places, basically. So what do you think about that? How do you feel about getting your temperature the new, taken? The new normal is going to be a, a weird um, way of life, but I think we'll all get used to it at some point. Um, I, I don't know. Right. I mean, giving my temperature, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me. In fact, it actually gives me a little bit of peace mm-hmm. of mind mm-hmm. that. What's your temperature right now? A, a cool 96.3. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay, I have no good. idea. Ice cold, right? <laughs> no, that's what I would have said, uh, but it's not. Um, <laughs> all right, so yeah, so temperatures is one one of them. Um, there's verification bracelets. There's even startups doing that. Um, Life Key is a company out of Wyoming. It's a startup that's got this like device. It's a bracelet that you'd wear to um, kind of show your your test results on if you've already had the antibodies for COVID nineteen, which is pretty cool. Um, you've also got like. Um, things like right now, I, I'm not going to a grocery store. I know people are, but I saw people, um, some folks I follow on like Twitter or Instagram. I can't remember posting pictures of them going into the grocery store saying, we'll see if this is a good idea in 14 days, you know, kind of thing. And that's, you know, all joking aside, kind of terrifying. So, um, so yeah, so we've been doing grocery delivery, but it's really hard to do. And I'm, we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but you know, are we going to not go to a grocery store anymore in the future? Yeah. yeah. I actually recently had a really good, I would say a great experience with, uh, with Kroger here in Indianapolis. You know, I don't know if they have Kroger nationwide. I think they do, to, you know, to some extent, but anyways, just on their yeah. app, just picked out all the, the food that, um, we wanted and went and pulled up and there's a phone number there in the parking lot. You called it, gave them your lot, your spot number. They came out with, a you know, a cart full of food, put it right in the trunk. I didn't even really have to roll down my right. window or anything like that. It and drove, drove home. And I mean, the only thing that I was not able to get from an inventory standpoint was paper towels. Everything else, yeah. business as usual for the most part. So I don't know, you know, it right. varies, I'm sure, across the U.S., but for me, it was a real nice experience. And I even said once this passes, I'll probably grocery shop like that in the future because it was easy, right? I mean, I didn't have to spend an hour walking around, standing in line. They just brought it out to your car. Um, right. Yeah, no, it's definitely, there's definitely convenience there. And I even saw like they're testing in San Francisco, uh, the self-driving car Neuro. I don't know if you've seen this yet. It's brand new. It wasn't in the newsletter, but because it, it just came out today, but Neuro is a self-driving car. They're going to start, they've approved it to deliver groceries. So it's a robot del- delivery. So we're literally because of this moving towards more towards like Star Wars, which is pretty cool. Um, silver lining, I guess. Yeah, say. I've seen some of that, uh, like at holding. Purdue, they have that burrito delivery robot that <laughs> roams around yeah. campus and delivers burritos to right. people. So, right, and we've talked about that before. So it's, I think, because so basically, what I'm saying is, COVID nineteen and the things that are happening because of it are making a new normal, and it's pushing us forward in a different direction than what we're used to. Um, I mean, so yes, the grocery store is one of them. I we'll talk about the grocery experience in a minute, but um, the other one is, um, you know face masks in public like you know that's is that going to be the norm do we all need to get really stylish ones because we're all going to be wearing them um because they they help you know keep spread keep the spread and i've even seen face shields are part are are, can actually work better so um so yeah it's funny it's funny nowadays you're right and so i think that you know mitigating your risk is important so maybe not face Mm -hmm. masks on a daily basis but when you're using mass transit right whether it be a Mm -hmm train a bus a plane something like that you know wearing one that, right. that's probably you know you kind of want to shoot for the middle ground and move on to the next topic and basically going to the gym i mean are we going to go to the gym again is that a place you really want to go i don't know like i i think it'd probably be best in my best interest but maybe we should just get a self you know home gym or use an app um use an app this week called eight fit which i use a lot or I say I used to use a lot until recently. Um, I did a, did like a it's a hit workout, so high intensity workout, and I did it on like Monday or I think it was Monday, 
I couldn't walk for the last two days. Like I did so many, I did like so many squats in a, in a seven or eight minute workout. It was a 21 minute workout, but so it was kind of broken down in different sectors. I can't feel my legs right now. <laughs> and so, it's, so, so maybe that's the, the new approach is like figuring out some of these apps that are great that are out there. There's a lot of them um, that you can use. I used to do a seven minute workout every day. You know, I did that for like a year straight. And so I think there's a lot of other things you can do. Um, but, you know, obviously I love being able to go to gym. It's a nice change of scenery when we're all at the house or at home a lot. It's one of those things where you don't realize what you had until it's gone. Like I probably went to right. the gym once or twice mm-hmm. a week for years. And now that I can't mm-hmm. have it, I woke up this morning like, man, I would I want to go every day. <laughs> yeah. I want to go every day. I'd love to yeah, go to the gym exactly. right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and, yeah, the other one is um, you know, speaking of you don't know what you're going to uh, – what, you, what you've got until you miss, you miss it kind of thing is uh, – you know, we've got a lot of people are our parents, right? Including myself. And so, um, love our children, but like being a school teacher now part time, you know, juggling that with my wife and I, as we both run a company is that's a challenge. Like, I'm not going to kid you. And I think, um, that's going to continue. So the question is, are we homeschooling our kids now? And, and one of the articles that, you know, I shared was this idea that March was the first month since 20, 2002, where there was not a mass shooting on a campus or school, which it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's great. I love that. But the fact that we had to have a global pandemic for that to happen is kind of a big deal. And, um, you know, I just think that, you know, there's got to be there's got to be a better way. And maybe th- this will help lead us to a, uh, a better way. And so, oh, I'm, 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 I've got some people chatting here. I just I didn't even I couldn't see it before because it's kind of blocked by my other screen. But uh, hello, I've got Paulette over there and uh, Jennifer O'Daniel. And oh, yeah, Jessica. Jessica's there. Uh, Jessica Kim. Well, that's, thanks for joining. That was one of the things I was going to say as you were talking was we have uh, family members uh, viewing us right now, and I know for one thing, yeah, I, I don't have children, but you, you know, you do, so you can speak to that. But one of the things I've missed is being able to see my parents <laughs> uh, yeah. for the purpose of I, I don't want to potentially get them sick and, and vice versa. So it's been right it's been harder. That's a challenge. Life. The same here. I mean, we've got. Um, you know, we're not able to do what we used to do, which is um, the lifestyle was jumping on airplanes and things. But I have seen like reports and I don't know how I haven't really validated all of them. But like, you know, so many bears are now getting out and like hanging out more. And like the, the, the great, you know, Great Lakes are now crystal clear. And like because all, you know, we're not doing as much to pollute and, and create um, havoc on the environment. So that's kind of an interesting thing. So I don't know. It's, it's all it's I mean, so the new normal is, is going to be interesting to see what that is. I think it's not going to be the normal we're used to, but I think I'm open to change. And I think that um, we just all have to accept the fact that, you know, life is constant change and we'll have to roll with the punches. If, if, if you know, you may not like all of it, but um, there is probably a, a, a positive that we can pull out of it. Sure. You know what? I'll, I will tell you, though, I have some people very close to me that are involved in the education space. And I think that because we are we are involved in technology, right, that there's a I think there's a huge opportunity in the edu- the online virtual education space. I mean, I'm speaking the obvious, but I mean more granular than online universities and that sort of thing, because there is a, it seems to be a varying degree of, you know, people's abilities to, to use certain software, so forth and so on. So anyways, I think we've talked about enough about COVID and we got to get, keep it light and let's, um, it's such a, yeah, exactly. It's a tough one. Cause it's like, it's overwhelming us right now. It's overwhelming our, you know, everything that's happening in the world so but we can dive, we can dive in let's go into the next yeah let's keep next, going so uh, i know that you always yep. you always like to um celebrate people in your network so i saw in yep. your newsletter you had a bunch of good stuff going on so what do you got a lot of stuff yeah so well the bigger first one that's kind of more personal is um david giordano uh, he was my first um boss out of college and he he, he basically was the ceo of this company called tsg which turned you know called is called T, uh, technology services group and anyway long story short it was a consulting firm i went and worked for him as an intern and then ended up going there out of college out of purdue and was a systems developer well 23 years later here they are uh, they just sold to uh, a, a company out of, uh, I think, Boston, and wow. I'm excited for them. And congratulations to Dave and, and his team. Uh, that's a really uh, a nice uh, long run there. So hopefully they can continue to, to build on, under the new new team. So that's that's a nice kudos and a personal one. Uh, you got uh, Garrett Camp, who's a co-founder of uh, Uber, StumbleUpon, and has Expo now. It's a kind of a hybrid model for ge- generating startups. He just launched an, a nonprofit effort called uh, Every.org. So you can go check it out, Every.org. 
to help support people in need during uh, this ongoing global crisis. So that's a really feel good one. Um, Dan Petty, he's a designer and product kind of expert out there, um, wrote a book. It's uh, available for pre-order now. It's called That Portfolio Book. If you go to thatportfoliobook.com, you can learn more about it. Um, we've got uh, Aubrey uh, Pagano. She's uh, she's an entrepreneur. She had a, a company called Bowen Drape and did really well with that and just joined a venture firm, uh, Corrigan Ventures, which just raised their second fund, $36 million fund. Uh, she's joining on to as a, as a partner and is going to help lead that effort. Um, John Biggs, who's former editor at TechCrunch, uh, he's just wrote a book as well. A lot of people writing books, a lot of time, a lot of things going on. So a lot of books popping out. And uh, he's wrote a book about getting funding. So if you, it's called Get Funded, the Startups on, Startup Entrepreneur's Guide to Seriously Successful Fundraising. And it's coming out in June. You can pre-order it now. Uh, I've got links in my um, newsletter. We'll put links into the podcast uh, uh, post as well. And then Brian Solis, longtime friend. Uh, I've known him for a while. Uh, great guy. He's an author and futurist. Um, he just joined uh, Salesforce as a global innovation evangelist, which is really cool. He should be able to bring a lot of um, his insights and analysis and expert advice to Salesforce, which is a, a force in itself. So, yeah, lots going on. Oh, oh, and I forgot one more. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. How could I forget? He's got a foundation, and he's partnered with um, some other groups, a- AI for Anyone, to present uh, free 60-minute introductions to artificial intelligence for students and educators. So he's a big um, learner, life- lifetime learner. I've interviewed him before um, on the podcast. Uh, I think it was I put it on the Startup of the Year podcast, and you can go check that out at startupoftheyearpodcast.com. Sorry, Startup of the Year podcast, which is out on, on the internet or anywhere podcasts are, are, are offered. Anyway, Mark Cuban really is a big learner, lifetime learner and is big, big in uh, AI. So, um, you know, I can make totally make sense for him to get behind this effort to help more people learn about artificial intelligence because he feels like it's it's the it's going to be a game changer. So definitely check that out. Yeah, It's always nice to hear people doing good things and getting some good news during yep. these strange times. But moving yep. forward as well, I, I know that the now's the time for consuming at home. Have you been watching mm-hmm. or reading anything lately that um, oh, yes. you everybody about? I am consuming. Um, well, consuming in a way that, well, so my normal would be not to consume and go to sleep. So right now, because I think the things that are happening in the world, I'm not getting as much sleep as I usually do. I usually um, try to get more, but you know, I need a little bit of a, um, a fix of something to kind of, I guess you could say, calm the, calm the nerves or just kind of chill for a second. And so some of the things I've been watching are not necessarily in that realm, but um, Ozark, I don't know if you've ever watched Ozark. It's on uh, Netflix, uh, Jason Bateman, really good, uh, kind of suspenseful um, series. And it's got, they're into season three now and they, you know, they dropped that, I think it was the, like end of March. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so uh, it's really good. I don't want to spoil it, but you should check it out if you like those types of suspenseful kind of um crime slash i don't know drama um anyway it's, it's really good check it out and then i always like to follow it up with with a little bit of uh something funny to like get some laughs out so we watch a little short episode of of schitt's creek which is on season six and uh they're all out as well and uh, i think you can watch it on youtube tv the season the sixth season as well as uh the pop tv app i think has it and uh, it soon will be on Netflix and probably on Amazon too. So those are some good ones. And then I did finally watch. I've in four. I'm four episodes into Tiger King, which I know we talked about before. But uh, that is a train wreck. <laughs> Holy smokes! I think that's the appeal. Wow. Yeah, people have been loving it. <laughs> it's well, it's it's yeah. It's I can't believe they have all that footage. I mean, it's just crazy. So I mean, I'm in episode four. I don't know how many there are, but you kind of have to keep watching because you don't want to see what's going to happen. So I'm sure I will. And uh, yeah, so the other, the other one is uh, just a lot of live live performances. Um, you know, there's live performances from Dave Matthews and and Jack Johnson and a lot of different supported things. Our farm aid, we had the Willie Nelson and his sons on there this weekend, and it's been really um, fun to watch everyone kind of perform from their homes to our homes. So that's pretty cool. And uh, and then obviously the one you showed me a couple of weeks ago, and now they're on episode three is some good news uh, by uh, John uh, John. Krasinski from uh, the Office fame, as well as now um, some other, you know, he's, a, he's like in a bunch of movies and whatnot as well. So, yeah, we got more people joining the live cast here, which is pretty cool uh, as we're on Instagram and uh, doing a new thing, trying to trying to trying to share some some of the background behind the scenes of somewhat Frank podcast, how we get it done. Johnny, good time. So what's up? What's up next? We got we got a wrap soon. I know we got some some things coming up, but yeah, we have to jump. I was going to say I, I've been um, I've been watching Barry. I think you watched that as well. That's a great. I love Bill Hader. He's hilarious. It's a nice mix of you know some action and then uh, some dry mm-hmm. comedy. But um, 
Yeah, but anyways, buddy, you had said that, um, you know, there's some new testing apps that you've been interested in for the, mm -hmm. I, I think, um, for, for COVID recently. Is that right? Yep. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so there's a bunch of new stuff out there. There's some, some resources out there. If you're interested in resources around COVID, you can check out the resource page on Startup of, of the Year, um, our Startup of the Year website. Um, there's a number of different things. Uh, if, you're, if you've got laid off, there's a site, a site called Layoffers, which is basically collecting all the companies that have laid people off and trying to present them with job offers. Wow. So that's kind of another helpful one. Um, you mentioned that one about finding groceries. Do you want to share that? Yeah, I don't even remember the name of it, honestly. I shot you a note because you, basically you were um, ha a little frustrated with not being able to find groceries, but it was a great app. I wish I could remember the name of it. Yeah, so basically finding supplies is tough. And, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever had to, like, if you're trying to get, like, Prime Now to deliver, um, my my current flow for Prime Now, because that's the only one that around my area will deliver, is is um, Amazon, which is uh, Whole Foods. So I've got my little cart. I add all my things. I go and I try to then get a delivery time. I go to the delivery time and guess what happens? There's none available. So then you go back and you wait and then you try to like, it says come back later and refresh. So you go back and refresh, but in the meantime, when you come back, You've, you, they've now removed three or four items from your from your cart, and you have to. They sell, tell you what they are, but then you have to go find them because they're out of stock. And so you continually do this nonstop back and forth, and you do that for days. I've been doing it now for five or six days, and I've yet to get an order in. So definitely a lot of flow things you can do that make that better um, from a product perspective. And I know they're probably overwhelmed with with different uh, things happening, and uh, you know. But at the same time, it's super frustrating. <laughs> you know. So I ended up uh, this weekend instead of ordering through there, I ended up trying to call. I called around. So the hack for me is call around to local places that are in our area and say, "Are you guys like packing and doing curbside pickup, like you mentioned?" And then going and doing that. So it, you know, it's it's doing two things. It's, that's shopping local and it's helping those local companies um, that are doing groceries to survive. But um, I still feel like they're not. You know, in doing that, like our groceries were double the amount they normally are, which is fine. We want to help the local folks, but also. Um, you, you end up doing two different orders. You end up doing, you know, now I've got to go find the things they didn't have because it's just a smaller grocery store. And now you're trying to like do it at, at Amazon or whatever again, or, or, or Whole Foods. And yet I'm still waiting. So I, I <laughs> yesterday I had three different times. I went into, I got, an, I went on their website prime now and said, we are, we're now de doing deliveries today. So I was like, yes, I got it. I go in, I, I'm like, I get ready to, I get, get ready to check out in the, t and I picked a time. I picked 8 PM at night yesterday. And then I went through the next step, which was, hit check out which is like pay right now and by the time i did that guess what my time was gone how infuriating is that it is so infuriating like you're like you think you're gonna win and then you don't so it's like i've been calling it like um <laughs> prime now roulette or if you, it's like prime now lottery like you're gonna get groceries like who knows maybe but in the end like it's not like i'm starving and we're fine it's just like you know i like you know i like to get uh you know really fresh beets and rutabaga i don't know you know what i mean like for i can't sure. get that at normal place. Well, there's a huge opportunity <laughs> there and then it's ripe for amazon yeah. to purchase that technology and roll it into their system so you don't have people like you don't have to yeah. do that anymore right it's a queuing system i mean it's basically just make the queuing system better which is more or less if you just took the um the process and didn't like keep taking things out of my cart and drive me crazy and just kind of pushed all the things you want into the you know said okay we're gonna just put this in a queue and you're gonna hold that whatever that that shopping cart is until the next phase which is hey guess what we have an opportunity for you not for everyone but for you because you're now in the queue and now we'll like we'll process you but hey by the way we can't get you this yam and we can't get you this piece of um you know salmon and we can't get you this bagel but we can offer you these other things do you want them boom 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 bum done doom i got my thing and now i'm not like pissed all the time right you know i think we're, I think it, we're working it, it out our we're, we're working out our next <laughs> product right now yeah, but you know what I mean? It does it's it seems like, you know, it's I am happy. I have had it work before. I am thankful that it's working. I'm thankful for all the people that are out there doing that the 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 shopping for us and putting things in there. I'm trying to I'm not not trying to say I'm not grateful. I am super grateful. The problem is that it's super frustrating. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's not like at the end of the day it's, you know, it's not like it's, you know, we're fine. Like we have enough kombucha for like a year, you know, but I'm saying, you know, in the big picture, it's super frustrating. You guys up there in Maine probably haven't had lobster in at least three or four days. It's probably pretty rough. Oh, you know what? We are going to do some lobster pickup. They do curbside pickup. And so we are going to get some this weekend we talked about. So yeah, you just go over to the local shop, pick some up. Um, and, you know, obviously with my, 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 uh, I was gonna almost called them mittens, my, uh, my gloves right. on and, uh, you know, mask or whatever, and try to like limit the amount of, um, exposure and then obviously burn all your clothes that you wore. But other than that, you should be good. Well, awesome. 
groundbreaking stuff as always, Frank. And I know that we have to jump, yes. so maybe time to wrap it up. Yeah, so it's it obviously good to catch up with you as well. Uh, and just stay safe out there, everybody. I know it's an unusual time. Try to take deep breaths. Be kind to one another. Um, and all the parents out there, just hang in there. I'm one of them. And, you know, every once in a while, I just want to pull your hair out. But um, there's a good Elmo video out there. Elmo's dad made a video and posted it yesterday saying, just breathe. He's, you know, he's going through the same thing. So we're all in this together. And I think we'll, uh, if you just show patience, patience and look at it as, a, as an opportunity to connect, reconnect with your family, kids, you know, and take it, take it a little slower. Maybe that's, maybe that's the new normal, right? Like maybe that's what it is. Maybe we're just moving too fast, like jet setting all over the country and like moving and spinning and ramen, you know, whatever it is. And just, uh, you know, maybe that's what the problem is. And maybe that's the earth or wh- whoever is just saying, slow the F down, slow it down. That's my somewhat Frank advice or take on it. That's your closing note. Yes. Slow it the F down everyone. Hope you all have a great day. Uh, it's good seeing you all. Thanks for all that show, showed up. And uh, until next time, I'm Frank Gruber. I'm here with Johnny Good Times. Thanks for listening. This has been a somewhat Frank podcast episode. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening. This is Somewhat Frank signing off. Frank Gruber. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe online, iTunes, SoundCloud, Android, wherever you can find it. Somewhat Frank podcast. We'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks so much.